How's it going everyone? I hope you guys are having a good day. So I wanted to make a quick video to talk about the breath first search algorithm, which you may have seen in the survive the night game we've been kind of working on. So in these simulations, we have a board that has a bunch of different zombies and those zombies have to find a path to the human so that they can attack the human, right? And the algorithm we're using to implement this is breath first search. Now, in terms of the algorithm, I'm just going to talk about the algorithm and kind of like show you with a, a diagram how it kind of works and how you can like conceptually understand it. I'm not going to dive into implementing it in this video. I just don't have enough time tonight to do it. But maybe if I have more time, I'll actually do an implementation walkthrough and that could be pretty cool. So how does this work? OK, let's just go ahead and look at a graph here. So we're going to make a graph and I'm going to go ahead and make a bunch of red nodes. And we're going to just go ahead and do like a three by three graph over here. So we got three nodes. We're going to do six nodes and then we have nine nodes. So given this map, how do you conceptually find a path from the zombie to the human? Also granted, there could be rocks that are blocking. So these two nodes may be completely impassable. So just looking at this, obviously you can just go straight up and then over, right? But in the computer, how do you implement an algorithm? so that you can traverse these nodes and these edges to move the zombie from the bottom right to the top left and even check if a valid path exists. So let me connect all these things with lines real quick. Okay, so I have lines between all those and this is actually exactly what is happening right here. You have these cells and each cell a zombie can move up, down, left or right. And so this can be conceptually visualized with a graph with nodes and edges. Okay, now in terms of the graph, you have to kind of understand locations, okay? So this is column zero, this is column one, this is column two, this is row zero, this is row one and row two. And I'll go ahead and just put rows and I'll put columns over here. Um, now just keep in mind when we're dealing with this type of stuff in like matrices and arrays, typically we start with the row first and then we do the column. So like if you see one comma two, that means row one, column two, okay? So the way breath first search works is I'm going to go ahead and just like show you with a visualization and then we're going to go bring in a cue and then we'll kind of walk through the algorithm step by step until you understand it. So you usually start with like a source location. I'll just say two comma two because that's row two column two. And this is a zombie. We want to, we want to try to figure out can the zombie move from here all the way to the human. And so as you're running through this algorithm, what basically happens is breath first search is going to First, start with one node, and then it starts traversing all the closest nodes that it can, like this, okay? And eventually, let's just assume this wasn't a rock, it, eventually it would get to the human after traversing all these, and then you could have an if statement that says, hey, if the value of that node is H, then you found a human, and you can do something to traverse the, the path backwards to figure out, okay, what path should the zombie take? To get there so that's kind of how the algorithm works it kind of slowly fans out from a source node until it gets to some target destination now in order to implement breath for search you need to have a queue and the way this algorithm works is you start at a location so in our case we're going to go ahead and just start at this 2-2 location and we push it into the queue and i'm going to designate the yellow to be like it's in the queue and then green means we've already seen that node Okay, so you start off the algorithm and you push 2-2 two, two into a queue. And then the algorithm starts where basically you take off or you shift off the first thing from the queue. And then you need to traverse the edges of that node. In our case, we have an edge that goes from 2-2 two, two, to 2-1. Two, and then you're going to go ahead and push that value into the uh, queue as well. So let's just go ahead and say 2-1 and we'll push that in. And then here we'll say 1-2. And then we will push that in as well, just like that. And technically we've already seen this node, so we can turn it green. And then you finally want to check the value of the current location you're at and say, Hey, is the value an H? If not, then you keep going through the algorithm. So let's just step through one more time. And now we're going to pop off the two comma one, which would put us over here at this location. So let's just go ahead and turn this one green and we're going to push in any valid locations that we can do from this node so we have this edge and potentially we have this edge but because this is an r we're not going to push that into our queue we're just going to ignore that so for right now i'm just going to go ahead and push in 
to one, and remember it's a queue, so you want to make sure it goes to the very last. Every new node you find that you could potentially walk to, you need to add it to the very end of the queue. And then same thing with this. We're going to go ahead and take this one off, and then we're going to say that we have visited this one, and then we are going to push in 0, 2, like this. So now we have 0, 2, and we have 2, 2 waiting to be popped off. Now, one thing I didn't mention is as you're kind of marking these nodes as green, you want to keep track of what nodes you've already seen, okay? So in our case, we've seen 2, 2, we've seen 2, 1, we've seen 1, 2. And the reason we're doing this is because when you were to pop off, for example, 2, 0, technically, this thing has an edge that goes back to 2, 1. Like, it depends on the type of graph. But you don't want to push in the same direction of a node you just went to because now you're just going to go back and forth and back and forth and you're infinitely going to just traverse your graph nonstop. So every time you pop off a, a node or a location and you go ahead and turn that node green, you wanna make sure that you add it to a scene array so that later on when you're trying to tra traverse these edges, you don't you know, re-add it to the queue. Okay, so we are at zero two. Technically this thing should have been yellow and we are gonna go ahead and just do the same algorithm. So we pop this off we're going to put this up here into the scene array, okay? And then we're going to make this thing go green, and then we're going to change this to yellow. And this thing is 0, 1. And then we push that into our queue, and then we do the same algorithm again. We go ahead and pop this off. This is going to go 0, 1. Okay? This thing is going to then turn yellow. This thing will turn green and then zero zero needs to be added okay so now eventually you're going to get to a point where you're at the node that is what you're looking for right we're looking for a human and you could have many humans on the map so just the first time you find a human like if you want the pathfinding to go to the closest human this could be the way to do it but basically when you pop off that zero zero you're going to check is the current node that we're looking at is it a human if so then just kill the algorithm stop the while loop and then, um, you know, of course, we keep track of this one just for algorithm sakes. But now we have successfully traversed from zombie all the way to the human, which means that there is a valid path. But now the issue is how do we know which way to move the zombie? Well, during this whole process, instead of just pushing locations into the queue, you can actually push data structures. So if you wanted to, you could push an object, and that object could have like a row, you could have a column. And then it could also have a previous path. If you just want to say like previous, you can have an array of locations. Okay. So so how this helps us is let's let's kind of step back the algorithm and let's pretend that we're back uh, you know at the very very start of this and everything is basically red. We haven't seen anything, but we want to go ahead and push in uh, one two into this queue. So we're going to say row one, column two. Okay because we know that there's an edge there and we haven't seen it before. Technically, this thing would be like just 2-2. Two, two. Okay. But we need to keep track of where do we just come from? Well, how do you do that? You can have an array and to keep track of where you just came from, you could just push in 2-2 two, two. because we are now looking at 1-2 and we know that we just came from 2-2. Two, two. And eventually, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get up here and we're going to have a path that is going to look like this. It's going to say 0, 2, and then previously it's going to say 1, 2. So at the very end, you're going to end up having a node that you're going to pop off of this queue that's going to have the entire list of previous locations that you've been at, and you can just loop through this array from start to finish to figure out the path that we took to get to the human. And all you need to do is just, you know, go ahead and just ignore the first 2-2 two, two location, I guess, and pick the 1-2. If you wanted to move the zombie to the human, you would just pick the next thing that's in the previous, and you would know the path. Okay, so that is like a visual representation of how Breath First Search works. I know it's a little bit confusing, and trying to translate this into code, that'll be a completely different video if I do dive into that. Let me know in a comment if you're interested in seeing that. But I just want to give you an overview of how it kind of works, right? You basically, you have a grid, you find a starting location, and then you have a queue in a scene array. You just keep on pushing locations into that queue and popping locations off of that in order. And then every new node you find, 
you just push in the new unseen edges and then you just make sure you don't push in the locations that have rocks or have boxes or something so that your path will not include those when it tries to like traverse okay um i don't know hopefully this was helpful for you guys and maybe if you're looking through the survive the night code which by the way you can just go and find this is all open source basically you need to go to like i think the zombie typescript file and you can see down here we basically just keep pushing an x and y in a path onto the queue and then later on we can use that information to know where like what path we had to take to get the zombie to the hum human so if you want to check out this file i can put a link to it um if you want to read through this queue logic i didn't write this code and this was actually committed by another person who's been kind of working on this has been mainly me and some other guy working on this and a couple of other contributors so feel free to join the discord if you have questions about it but it's a very standard breast first search algorithm right this is typically how it works so read through that code if you want to understand it but Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this helps you learn. If maybe this is something you haven't seen before. Uh, but yeah, I mean, try to learn some of the, the graph traversal algorithms. There's death first search. There's breath first search. There's also something called A star. That's a more efficient algorithm for pathfinding for like AI and games. Um, but a lot of cool stuff. Definitely learn it. Um, it's fun to learn. Other than that, I guess have a good day. Happy coding.